Supposed to be Jerry. The blow off. God, that kissing thing, though. Is... That's how great is that? Oh, just having been there where you just think you you're you can lean in and give that kiss. There's nothing worse than thinking you're doing the right thing oh. or or even being suave or cool or and it, it doesn't matter how long ago it happened to you. Like there are embarrassing moments that stand out in my mind and I cannot shake them. You think back and and the the douchiness of the moment creeps up on me so much. I told you when I wanted to kiss my little girlfriend Jill, I was in maybe 4th grade or 5th really? grade. And I didn't have, we were boyfriend and girlfriend, I thought, but I didn't know how to kiss her. And my father's advice fucking was horrendous. My father said, uh, what you do is ask her if you can smell her breath. And when she breathes in your face, kiss her. A rapist. Like, uh, that really is. It's like, wow, thank you, shittiest advice in history. So I didn't do that. So we're down by the creek one time. I'm like, I got a question for you. And she's like, what? I'm like, well, I want to do something. And she's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, well, you know my favorite group? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You wanted to Ozzy her? You wanted no. to Black Sabbath her? No. no. Of oh, you not. know that. <laughs> of course I know. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't say that. And she just never answered. Uh, Is that embarrassing? <laughs> oh, I am real. You brought silence. That because everybody had to dwell on the embarrassment. Yeah. That is really bad. It was humiliating, and I've never shaken oh. that one. I've never. That might have been fifth grade. I've never shaken that one off. That is a bad one. My favorite group. <laughs> yeah. oh. What douche? I, I I have a douche moment that I cannot fucking shake. Uh, I was probably seventeen, and my mother was working at some fucking rowdy nightclub place with a bunch of disco fucking assholes in it and shit like that. And uh, I would occasionally put on a, a oversized, bad-fitting, ill-fitting, mismatched suit to try to get into the place because I thought, you know, I was going to get some chicks in, in, in the disco. Uh, so I went in there, and I saw a couple of girls in there from school. And uh, I thought, this is perfect. So I start talking to the uh, the girls, and I, I kind of get one that I really liked. And her name is Crystal. Her name is Crystal Piatnik. <laughs> Crystal Piatnik, where are you from John Glenn? I hope you're fat. <laughs> I hope you're big and fat now. Um, yeah, and uh, so I'm talking to her, and she goes, uh, Oh, me and my friend have to leave for a few minutes, but we're coming right back. I was like, okay. I waited outside the place, standing there in my bad suit, waiting for her car to come back. How long did you wait for? About 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Over an hour. <laughs> and then I realized um, they're not coming back. They blew you off? <laughs> yeah. But, okay, that's part one of the eh. embarrassment. Part two is Anthony then decides because... Of this embarrassment that I, I, I have to uh, um, ha weigh myself down with. I'm going to go back into the bar and drink like a motherfucker. So I get hammered doing tequila. And uh, one of the women that worked with my mother as a cocktail waitress in there was really hot, blonde, uh, much older than I was at the time. You know, I'm 17, something like that. She was probably... 35 and i'm looking at her and i'm all drunk and i i went to just i go i'm gonna give her a kiss ah. so she comes by me with like a tray and i i blurted out i love you and went to grab her and knocked all of the ah. glasses over they <laughs> broke all over the bar and then i just i couldn't even like get up off of the bar i was so fucking drunk and I had to be driven home. Were you embarrassed when you remember that? Dude, I could never face that woman again. And I mean my mother. <laughs> no, I, could, I could never see her again. I could, I, like, any time I heard she was going to visit, like my mother just stopped by the house, she was going to come by since Saturday, I had to leave. I was so embarrassed that I said, I love you, and went to kiss her and knocked every drink glass off of her tray. And they were all laughing. Like, all the waitresses were laughing because it was just funny. They thought it was, like, cute, cute that the drunk kid was trying to, like, kiss the... 
Oh, this is so bad. Oh, I am such a douche. Oh, oh. oh, look, we got phone calls of douched moments. Oh, yes. Why don't we take calls? We yes. haven't done that at all today. I would like that a lot. All right, let's go to Jersey and talk to Mike. Mike. Good morning, boys. How are you? Good. Hi, how Mikey. are you, Mike? I I'm a fucking douchebag. My mother made me go to her, her mother's father's funeral when I was 14. So here we are. I'm like a glad-handing retard my first time going to a funeral. And at the end, you know, you do the line, the kiss, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know to say I'm sorry. They were like, thank you for coming. I'm like, ah, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll stick with you. I'm a, I'm I, a fucking flaming a-hole. I really enjoyed it. A hey, great party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fucking big corpse in a box. And I'm like, yeah, can we have yeah. tea and coffee? Good job. Good job, Mike. Thanks, boys. Punching out. Hey, let's go to line two and talk to Stryker. Stryker. Morning, boys. Hi, hey. Stryker. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jimmy. What's up, buddy? Hey, uh, I can top Anthony's douchey moment of waiting outside the club. Oh, good luck. Was a, I was a junior in high school. There was this girl that I was in, like, three classes with. And I really liked her, and I thought we got along great in school. So I asked her out on a date. She gave me her phone number and said, call me Friday, and I'll let you know. I called her Friday. Her mom says, I'll take a message. She'll call you back. She never called. Well, she never called. Who is so this, I'm Rocky like, Dennis? <laughs> 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 the blind girl felt your face with a fucking rake and told her father, look, if that fucking giant-headed mongoloid calls, pretend to be a dick. Yeah. So you were in love with Laura Dern. What yeah. happened? Well, exactly. On, on Monday, I asked her about it. She goes, you know what? I forgot. She said, but we can go out this weekend. So I called that Friday, the next Friday. This time, nobody answered. I kept leaving messages on her answering machine. Oh, uh, you don't want to leave messages like that. Yeah, well. No, no there's nothing worse than a message from somebody you don't want to hear from. You're like, just fuck off. That's douchey, but it does. that does not beat I love you and dropping uh, glasses No, everywhere. it does not. It. My booze-stained, yeah, ill-fitting suit. You I did, did it four weeks in a row. Oh, four weeks in a row? I mean, well, you're an asshole, but... Yeah, but Anthony's is worse. Moment. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Stryker. Oh, okay. uh, I like the chick ones. Let's go to Cody in Indiana. Cody. Hey, what's up, brother? Jim Norton, March 12th in Chicago area. Thank oh, you very much. And the 13th. God damn the thought of you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Cody. <laughs> I'm not going to that one, so I don't give a hoot. Oh, you're going oh, to St. Charles. Language. St. Yeah, Charles? Yeah, St. Charles, man. Remember me, Cody, from Indiana. I will remember you, young Cody. You're a liar. Anyway, uh, I called with one, but I thought of a more douchey one. It was with a girl that I liked in sixth grade. and I You were a substitute to... teacher? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. We're not, we're not taking hot stories. <laughs> so I asked her out. She said no. So I took a piece of paper, and I wrote on it, I love you. Will you go out with me from your secret admirer in locker 2B? And I put her in her locker. She never found it, but her friend did. And she came up to me and said, hey, you're in locker 2B, right? And I said, yeah. She goes, you're a fag. <laughs> <laughs> you're a fag. Ah, you tried something clever, and you got called a fag. I said, I'm not, I didn't write that, and she goes, you're locker 2B, and I said, no, I, I didn't write that ever, and uh, yeah, it was me, and I am a fag. And even though you probably could have uh, convinced her it wasn't you, and that one of your douchey friends set you up, uh, you knew deep down it was you, and you were a, indeed a fag. And she knew, there's no fucking getting around that bullshit. Yeah, I know. See you guys later. Have a good one. Fucking chicks. They had it all. Thanks, Cody. I think I've told this story before, but I really... This is in high school now. Ooh, My first oh, one was excusable. Yeah. Where I kind of had a crush on the girl, and I did what he did, where I would send her a couple of notes. And, like, if you want to know who I am, like, I'd drop them in her mailbox at her house. I would say, wear, like, a scarf, and she would wear a scarf, and I wouldn't tell her. So I wrote her one love note, and I wrote... I asked somebody in Spanish how to write Speak of the Devil, because that was Ozzy's new album, and I wrote it in Spanish <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> Maybe if you just laid off the fucking music and band references, you might have done a lot better back in the day, as they say. What were you thinking? I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should be. I don't know. Oh, that's horrible. That's terrible.
I mean, it's not that bad, I guess, but oh. I, I'll never forget this moment. Uh, if you never, if you're never gonna forget, I'll never it, forget it. It's douche. Yeah. Uh, you know how you know you go, you growing up, you going through junior high school, then you start to you know uh, like kiss the opposite sex goodbye. Like it's like oh, I'll see you later, Mwah, kiss oh, on yeah, the cheek. Yeah. Right? So we're all hanging out, like you know, you're just standing around. 